One of the, the, the big things about um, Famicom as you know, family convention, right, were the themes of reaching out, uh, reaching up, reaching in, and reaching out. And that theme really got me thinking. I thought, well, this is a good thing to bring back and, and just to share and to, to reflect on um, with all of you together. Um, I think when we think about our lives, we're always looking for how can we find fulfillment in our lives. And of course, according to the divine principle, it's, our purpose is pretty clear, right? We have three great big missions in our life that actually covers every aspect of our life. The three great blessings, right? To be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. And they correspond with the great commandments from Jesus. You know, the greatest commandment is to love God, right? Well, that's our first purpose in life, is to grow and mature ourselves so actually we become representatives of God, that God can dwell with us, our individual maturity and perfection. That's our first purpose in life. And then the second, you said it's like that, you know, love ourselves, but to love our neighbor as ourselves, so basically loving people. And that's the second great purpose. It starts in our family, right? but also is it meant to expand to the society, nation, and, and the world. And then the third great purpose is the loving creation, you know, a perfection of dominion of love, where we're good stewards over the amazing things of, of creation. But I'm going to focus on the first two, loving God and loving people. And those are the things that came out as the theme for our mission as unificationists in this world. So let me start with, uh, with reading from the uh, Exposition of the Divine Principle, our, our core teachings, uh, explore, exploring and expanding on our understanding from Scripture, from the Bible. So this is from the section called The Principles of Creation. The key to God's first blessing is the perfection of individual character. In order for an individual to perfect his character, he must form a four-position foundation within himself, whereby his mind and body become one through give and take action with God as their center. Such individuals become the temples of God, achieve complete oneness with him, and acquire a divine nature. They experience the heart of God as if it were their own. Sound pretty good, right? This is God's vision. This is God's plan for us. God's intention and desire for us in our lives. There we go. So that's our, our first purpose, is to become people who reflect God's nature, to experience God, God dwelling in each one of us, temples of God. Well, I don't know about you, but... I don't often feel so much like I'm a very good temple of God, right? God might be kind of embarrassed sometimes to hang out in my temple. So, the divine principle recognizes that. And this is, this is Father Moon pointing out the challenge because mind-body unity has to do with my ability to, you know, say I'm going to do something and follow through. I wrestle with that a lot, right? You know, I make a promise and somehow... <laughs> I don't always follow through. This is from the Chun Sung Jung, um, Father Moon talking about us as, as true people. Looking at human beings, we can see that the mind and body are at war. This struggle did not start today. In the current age, it began with our first ancestors. As is recorded in the Bible, it began just after the fall of Adam and Eve. So we're always wrestling with this challenge of uniting my mind and body. You know, my mind, Paul said it, you know, I, with my mind I want to do good, but with my body I end up not doing the good, doing the bad that I don't want to do. So in religion, there's, there's traditionally been, you know, the main way that we, we fight to overcome the temptations of our body is by force and willpower. You know, we fast, we, we determine, we sacrifice, all these things. And, you know, and Father Moon, in, in, in this is explained, yeah, that's one way, but to be really victorious, to really bring unity of mind and body, the love of God has to be there. And it brings us together, not as 
the, the mind is the master and the body is the servant. No, we're designed to be partners working together, brought together in unity centered on God's love. So again, this is from Father Moon. No one, though, can conquer the body without welcoming God into him or herself. Only with the power of God's true love and truth can the mind become the subject partner, the leader. Take command of the body as its object partner and realize the ideal of oneness with God. So, in the uh, terminology of uh, Famicom, we need to do some upreach, right? You've heard of outreach, you've heard of inreach, but actually before all that, we have to do upreach. We have to reach up to God, to God as our heavenly parent. It has to do with our, our vertical connection to God. That's the starting place for everything. You know, before we even can love our neighbor, we have to love and know the love of God. And then through that love that we experience, knowing that we're loved by God, we have love to share with others. So, practically speaking, what do we need to do to, to do that upreach work, right? Okay, I need to do some upreach. A lot of times we say, oh, I need to do some outreach. Well, before we do outreach, let's do some upreach, right? So the first place we upreach is through God's word. This is why we have a tradition in our movement of morning devotion, of hunduke, of daily reading and studying of God's word. We need to fill our minds with God's truth, with God's perspective. And this helps us, the more we can understand about God's heart, even intellectually, the more we can see things from God's view especially when we're dealing with challenges in life, when we look at things from the perspective of God and God's heart. So understanding and studying God's word. But that's, you know, that's the intellectual side, which is an important foundation because our thinking is a starting point for any action. You know, before we do some action, there's some thinking going on behind. So we want to get our thinking straight, right? But more than that, we need a relationship. And prayer, meditation quality time with God is where we expand on our intellectual understanding, where it can move from our head to our heart. Because when we know and experience, not just, oh yeah, God loves me, but actually we feel, oh, God loves me. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> and sometimes I need to stop and just take a breath. Okay. <laughs> You know, my mind says, oh yeah, God loves you, God loves you, but I don't feel loved, right? So taking quiet time, and, and this is why it's also important in our life of faith to dedicate some quality, quiet time. Hang out with God. <laughs> some quality time with God to allow ourselves to feel God's love, to allow God to embrace us, to hold us, to comfort us to encourage us. So that happens, you know, some through God's word, but really reaches the heart through our meditation, our prayer time with God. So this is also part of our upreach, investing in our daily quality time with God. Now then the other upreach is that we need to bring God into every aspect of our life. You know, we're not spending all, at least I don't spend my whole day reading the Bible, reading scripture, reading divine principle and follow those words. No, I don't. <laughs> and I also don't spend the whole day praying. Uh... <laughs> so what do I do the rest of the time? Well, we take God with us. This is what attendance is about. Attending God means in any circumstance, in any situation, bring God with me. So when I go to work, hey God, let's go to work. <laughs> When I go to watch a movie, when I'm, I'm reading an entertainment book, when I'm playing with friends, when I'm doing activities, hey, bring God along. Attend God. Let God be part of every aspect and quality of my life. Especially, you know, I spend most, you know, most of us spend you know, eight hours a day with work. Well, God should certainly be with us at work. You know, when we're, when we're dealing with 
all kinds of things. Hey, God, what am I going to do now? <laughs> oh, how am I going to deal with this? Oh, God, help me love. Let me see from your heart, you know, to love people. By living in attendance to God, bringing God, we're upreaching all the time for God to be present and dwelling with us. So that morning devotion, hundake, nourishing ourselves, prayer time, bringing God with us in all circumstances, this is the beginning point. This is the upreach, which is the foundation for everything else that we do. So to have a fulfilled life, the first great purpose is our connection with God, loving God, right? As Jesus said, with all our heart, mind, soul, and being, with everything. That's our upreach, right? So we're already, we're going to do upreach now, right? Time to do upreach. <laughs> So upreach is time for fellowshipping with God and connecting to the source of power in our lives. So then the second great purpose is loving people. And I'm going to split this into two parts because it starts with the family, and we're going to call that inreach, and then expands to the world, which I'm going to call that outreach. So let's read. This is from, also from the divine principle talking about that second great purpose of our life. Adam and Eve should have joined in loving oneness as husband and wife and raised children. This would have been the fulfillment of the second blessing. When God's second blessing is fulfilled, this family or community, that's the other level, also becomes a good object partner giving joy to God. So God's design is for us to develop that expanded love experience we have with God as an individual horizontally with people in our lives, starting with our family. So again, reading from the Chun Sung Young, the book on true family. The family is the base that connects us to each other's lives. Based on the environment that connects our lives together, the family is the basis upon which relationships of love can bloom. So, I want to expand this. The core is our family, our physical or biological family. But if we think about it, actually, we have a spiritual family as well. That's our church community. So, fellowship, you know, our time, hopefully Sunday service serves a couple of purposes. It gives us some encouragement with uh, God's Word. It gives us some time for fellowship. I really value the potluck time that we have together where we fellowship with each other, we can catch up with each other. But also, as a family, an important part of being a family is communication, fellowship and interaction. But also, how often do we, do we reach out to each other when we're not at church on Sunday? Actually, family is a source of strength and support. You know, we have our core family, our physical and biological family, but you know, for some of us empty nesters, right? <laughs> We're on our own now. It's just maybe a couple of us or maybe, you know, just one of us. So we have a spiritual family. So in reach is us reaching within our spiritual family to encourage and develop each other. So I want to encourage you, you know, this week, you know, give somebody a call. Somebody, somebody in our church community just call and say, oh, pastors told me I had to call somebody and I chose you. <laughs> so you don't need any more excuse than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so look it up or, or, or check in with me, but you know, let's, let's expand the strength of our family and community. Yeah, just by calling up and saying, hi. You know, I don't know about you, but you know, I'm kind of shy. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know, for me, it's like thinking, oh, gee, I could call somebody. Oh, but they probably, oh, they're probably doing something. They'll probably be bothered if I call right now. What do I say when I call? You know, why am I calling? Oh, did I do something wrong? Are they going to feel what? You know, oh, no, pastor's calling me. What's wrong? You know, I got that from, from Renata, my daughter. I started calling. She says, oh, I want to talk to you. She immediately say, uh-oh, did I do something wrong? <laughs> No, we all have an excuse. I'm calling because pastor said you, I need to call somebody. I love you. 
and I love you, and you were the one that popped to mind. You were my favorite person I wanted to call. <laughs> now, now, that doesn't feel so bad to receive, right? So when someone calls you and says, well, you know, I need to call someone, and wow, you just popped up to the top of my mind. <laughs> it's so good for us to connect with each other, and this kind of inreach and supporting each other, and, you know, and, you know, I'm encouraging you, but, I, you know, I've got to wrestle with this a lot myself. It's something I have to work on, <laughs> you know. But I always appreciate it when someone calls. You know, it just, it feels good. And even if it's not a good team, even if it's inconvenient, and I don't have much, and I don't, can't talk, I still feel good that I was remembered, that I was thought about. And by doing this kind of, just even communicating, we, we strengthen the bonds with each other. And the ability just to share with each other, to recognize each other, to, to love each other, it strengthens each one of us individually, but it strengthens us as a community. And the purpose of this, this purpose of this inreach, is so that our love grows bigger and stronger. Now, we're building a foundation of loving God and experiencing God's love on our own. But that's not meant to just be kept to ourselves. It's meant to grow. As Father Moon always tells us, the more you give love, the more you experience love. So the more opportunities we create to love other people, to share love with people, the more love we can experience, the more we can grow. Now, the goal is this world is desperate for the experience of love. Everyone is desperate for, you know, I know I am. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, you know, that I can pray and I can feel God's love, but, you know, there's nothing like a handshake, a hug, a conversation with someone that touches us, that God can touch us through other people in really powerful ways. So building that love, you know, family, our core family is where we're starting to learn about love and relationships. Our expanded family is also where we're expanding our ability to love because, you know, we've got all kinds... You know, thank God, we've got all kinds of people in our community. Boy, I tell you, all kinds of different flavors to experience. It's quite, a, quite you know, we've got a smorgasbord, right? You know, you ever go to a, to a restaurant and all they have is one thing to eat? Okay, I'm not going to come back to this restaurant. <laughs> we've got so many different flavors, right? Pick and choose. We have a, an amazing family, you know, from all over the world, right? In all different character types and personalities. So communicating with each other, give and take action with each other, it builds strength in our own lives and it builds a community that God can work through. Because the next step is to take that love that should overflow from our community, our church family, our spiritual family, to our larger community, and that's outreach. So, you know, a lot of times we start with, you need to go witnessing, you need to do outreach, you need to do this. But outreach comes on the foundation of first our upreach, our connection with God, you know, our internal foundation, and then our inreach, our family, our, our spiritual family. And through that love that we experience in a family, then we have things that just overflow that naturally we want to share with the larger community. So again, let me, let me read from uh, Father Moon. This is, this is from the Chun Sung Young, but the book uh, uh, focused on God. The center of everything is heart. And the family is absolutely necessary for cultivating it. We cultivate the four realms of heart in the family. And they must connect and unite centering on God. This connection and unity expands from the levels of individual and family to the community, nation, and world. Those four great realms of heart, that's the love of parents towards children, the love between husband and wife, the love between brothers and sisters, and the love children feel towards their parents, those four realms of, of, of heart and love that we experience first in the family, but also we experience in the outside world. Anyone who's an elder to me, I can feel a child's love 
and, and relate to them as with a parent, their parents. Anyone that's younger than me, I can have a parental heart and care for them. Friends, and, and you know, I can share as brothers and sisters. Now, sorry, only one husband and wife. Okay, make sure you're clear on that. <laughs> only one, that's only one. But all the others, it's like the formula for us to relate to the whole world. It's the family model for how we relate to everything. So again, this is from uh, Chun Sun Kung. This is about Chun Guk, the book on Chun Guk. We cannot keep God's blessing only to ourselves. We have to perfect families that extend blessings to the community. What I'm saying is that we must move heaven and earth to share God's blessings. God's blessing multiplies when we share it. So as we cultivate that experience of, of God's love in our own individual lives, as we expand that and create a, an spiritual, you know, our physical family, and then our spiritual family, where love is just multiplying and growing, then naturally the outreach flows from that where we naturally care and we're happy to be able to share with others. Now, from, from our uh, meeting, uh, the headquarters gave us this encouragement. This is the mission, the objectives of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification of America. This is, this is it. It's to empower. It's all about empowering, bringing God's power to all these circumstances. So empowering individuals to know and have authentic relationships with God as our heavenly parents. And especially to raise individuals up to be leaders that can lead and contribute to moving things forward, to bringing healing, to be a positive contribution to the world. So empowering individuals in our relationship with God. Empowering singles as they go through their process of growth to be able to create committed, profound, loving relationships in marriage. Cultivating and nurturing single people. Because right now this world is certainly not encouraging that. But to nurture and support singles to find their partner. And for already married uh, couples to support them and moving their marriage relationship through the marriage rededication ceremony and marriage blessing ceremony to a higher level, to bring God into that relationship in a new way that they hadn't yet experienced. Not that God wasn't already present there, but we can take it to a higher level and to create this one world family that creates lasting love that multiplies in the world. And then, as Nurture parents and empower parents. Now that's a big job. <laughs> empower parents to be able to raise their children with the experience of God's unconditional love. To help them know without a doubt they are God's children. They are divine beings. That there's no question of what their root is. So nurturing and empowering parents to be victorious. I know for me, I, I could use all the empowerment I can get, even with grown-up children, right? <laughs> so, so, and then finally, just that we empower communities towards healing, reconciliation, fulfillment, and joy. This is the mission. This is the vision that we have for what we're here. This is why we're here. And this is where we're going to find the greatest fulfillment in our lives. To do that, we need to reach up to God. We need to reach in within our family and then also our spiritual family. And then we need to overflow and outreach to the larger community. Let me uh, conclude with this from, um, from True Parents. What could be considered a happy environment? A happy environment exists when people are positioned to receive love from their parents, experience the love of their siblings, share conjugal love with their spouse, and love their children. That's the four great realms of heart. People can bring about the advancement of a nation and the world 
only when they know all these kinds of love. So the challenge for us is to be those representatives of God's love to the world, to bring God's love first into our own lives, through our upbringing, then in our family, our physical family, and also our spiritual family and community, and then overflowing that to our larger community, society, nation, and the world. I do? I do. Okay, please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for your design, that you designed this universe to be a place where everything is intended to encourage our ability to grow, to know love, and to express love. Thank you so much that your love is unconditional and that you persevered. And Heavenly Parent, so often we feel so far from you. We feel so inadequate. We pray, Heavenly Parent, that you could open up our hearts, even right now. In this morning, we, we come before you. We open up our hearts. We recognize those, those places where maybe out of fear we've closed you off. But we want to open up those places. We want to trust. Thank you. We know your unconditional love, your perseverance, your absolute commitment to bringing healing in our own lives, in our relationships, and the world around us. Heavenly Parent, even right now, we look at the larger world and we see so much conflict. We pray, Heavenly Parent, for those in, in Russia and Ukraine that we can see really reconciliation and healing there. We look at the challenge of North and South Korea, and a seemingly impossible task to bring reunification, and yet we know with you all things are possible. And even in our own lives, as we reconcile and work to bring our mind and body together into unity, sometimes that feels like an incredibly impossible task. But with you, we know all things are possible. We're so grateful for your love, for your perseverance, for your presence in our lives. And we pray, Heavenly Parent, that today, again, we can redetermine ourselves as your sons and daughters, as blessed central families, to bring your love and healing to every aspect of our lives, internally, externally, and in all the environment. So we thank you again and offer ourselves gratefully to you as your sons and daughters and blessed central families. Amen and adieu.